Okay guys, today we are going to be talking about why you don't see a lot of serrations or serrated knives on the channel and why I think serrated knives suck. <laughs> okay, so before we get into this, as always guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, check out the Instagram, all that fun stuff. Any and all support is very much appreciated. Okay, let's jump into this. Okay, so while saying out and out serrations suck isn't necessarily the full or complete story or truth here. I don't necessarily think serrations suck, but today we're going to be talking about a few reasons why you don't really see any serrated knives on the channel for wilderness applications, bushcrafting, camping, survival, and I've gotten several comments over the course of the past few months, you know, asking why I don't or why people don't see really any serrated knives. Now, this isn't completely true. I do own some, as you can see with the Gerber Prodigy here. I do have a few serrated knives, but yes, it is true. By and large, I would say 90 to 95% of my collection of knives are all uh, plain edge. And let's talk about a few reasons why this is and why serrations are not the best. So when it comes down to it, we will jump into use case application in a little bit, but by and large, when it comes to the wilderness camping survival and all of that use case, serrations are not the best. And the first reason has to do with geometry or structural integrity of serrations. Now you'll see with these serrations, like many others, uh, they are either chisel ground or chisel bevel. Now with this one, they are chiseled on the bevel. So there is a grind to the serrations, but the serrations themselves are chisel ground. Now, for those who don't know what chisel ground means, it means that only one side of the edge is ground. So the other side is completely blank. It has no metal removed. And this type of grind is used by some people, uh, primarily Emerson for plain edge knives, but really realistically has to be used for serrations. Now this grind or this style of bevel inherently comes with weaknesses and that's why it's really not uh, prevalently used and uh, the fact of the matter is when you grind a blade only on one side essentially all of the structural rigidity and all the strength of that uh, very cutting edge is reduced on the side that is unground because all of that steel is being pushed to that one side so essentially you know your cut is this side this side is a very thin very weak um, steel so you're not going to have as much support at the cutting edge of serrations and when you do things such as batoning even like i've done with this uh gerber prodigy uh, i've already noticed that even though i've only you know batoned a handful of times some of these serrations are a little bit bent and you can kind of feel nicks of steel on them because they have rolled just a little bit now partly that is due to the fact of the 420 high carbon steel in this blade but the other part of that is due to the fact that it is uh, chisel ground so that it makes it a weaker cutting edge now <laughs> let's talk about use cases because that's where serrations are most important. So serrations have a number of kind of pros and cons to them. We mentioned that the chisel grind is inherently weaker, but a few other things to note with the serrations. Serrations are kind of like a mechanical advantage, if you will. They essentially provide a lot of different angles and surface area for when you're cutting through something. Now, what this means is that you lose control and precision with the serrated edge, but what you lose in precision and control of the cutting edge you gain with efficiency. So essentially, if you're trying to cut through a material, a sharp edge versus a sharp a sharp edge versus a sharp serrated edge, the sharp serrated edge will outperform in doing things like cutting through flesh for self-defense, in kitchen applications like cutting through bread or steak, and it will also be more efficient in cutting through things like cordage. And so, like I said, that's primarily because you have a wider surface area and more contact with sharpened edges at different angles, and it kind of gives you a mechanical advantage when you're trying to cut through something. Now, the 
difficulty with that or the flip side like I said is that you lose precision and control because you have so many different angles at varying you know degrees you, the edge is wanting to cut and dig really deep into the material now if say you're trying to do something like feather stick uh, that becomes a problem because you're not so much in feather sticking trying to dig into wood or cut through wood you're trying to plane the wood in an even controlled manner and so if you have all of these different angles trying to dig in in different ways it makes it extremely hard and extremely difficult to control the to get a controlled and precise cut when you're plating down a harder surface like wood so good applications and good use cases for a serrated blade would be things like I mentioned in the kitchen in self-defense. And this is where you'll see, you know, things like the Spyderco Matriarch and I have a uh, Microtech Ultratech. And I even have a Microtech Ultratech that has a dagger blade that is fully serrated. And so for self-defense, when you're trying to, you know, cut through flesh and meaty bits, you know, a serrated blade is really good. And it doesn't matter so much about the strength, integrity, control, and precision. You know, if you're trying to defend yourself, you're just trying to inflict enough damage on the, you know, aggressor to protect yourself. And, you know, in a kitchen application, you're just trying to cut through things like a steak or like some meat like some bread uh, you know it's not a huge deal and the last one would probably be a marine application and this is where you'll see things like spider co's h1 salt line heavily features fully serrated blades to help you cut through fibrous cordage materials uh, quickly and once again in that situation say hypothetically you know you have a rope wrapped around your leg and you're just trying to cut the rope off of your leg so that you can get up and you know not drown uh, in that application application you're not particularly concerned about the precision or you know the controllability of your cutting edge you're just trying to cut that rope off your legs so you can get back up and you know not die underwater so you know in those types of applications serrations do make sense and once again like with some of the self-defense knives that I own that are dedicated self-defense blades they are actually fully serrated so i don't think that serrations are you know a joke or a shill or something that's uh and i don't think that they're useless but like many things in this world you know they have a proper use case and uh, i don't think the wilderness is the best use the last point i will kind of make and this one is uh, kind of a stigmata stigmatization or for me like when i first got into knife collecting and knife using ultimately in the wilderness you know a lot of times you would see serrations featured on cheaper knives and the prodigy is kind of a good example of that this is a you know around 40 to 50 dollar blade and so one way that it was really easy to tell that you were getting a low quality kind of cheap knife was if they added things like serrations because a lot of times in wilderness applications survival um, knife makers would you know push out suboptimal sub quality tools with gimmicks such as serrated blades and you know they would either use infomercials or commercials or you know ads to show that you know well with these serrated blades or with these serrated you know portions on your knife you can cut through cordage really easily and while it is true once again serrations do cut through cordage very well most of the time in wilderness living or survival you're not going to find yourself cutting cordage cutting rope and if you do you know it's cutting a piece of paracord real quick so that you can lash something together whereas most of what you're going to be doing is going to be things like notching uh, wood to make traps or you know notching or you know feather sticking batoning and in those types of situations when you're batoning having a weaker fragile edge that's more you know prone to breakage or rolling or repair you know you don't want that when you are trying to get a knife that has a lot of control that you can feather stick properly under duress or you know if under hypothermic situations you want a blade that is very easy to just feather stick so you can start a fire and warm up and so in those types of practical use applications or you know what you will be doing 
truly in survival, um, serrations just don't make a lot of sense. And so that's why with the vast overwhelming majority of my knives and luckily nowadays with primarily like with primary knife culture, we really shy away from serrations unless there's a dedicated use application. Like I said, unless you know that that blade is being set aside for self-defense, being set aside for marine saltwater application, you know, dive knives, that kind of thing. You know, unless you're really using a knife for very specific tasks serrations really just aren't uh, the best choice so that's why you don't see a lot of serrated knives on the channel um, like i said th these are the primary reasons why i don't go for them and if for nothing else like i said even if they're no longer a true indicator of cheaper knives or lower quality knives they really are not applicable and really not useful in wilderness tasks and wilderness living as a whole so anyways guys hopefully that kind of clears it up and explains why i don't have a lot of serrated blades once again the prodigy is a good example i do have a handful of wilderness knives that are combo or multi-edged blades but they are definitely far from my favorite and not necessarily knives that i would pick per se so anyways guys as always god bless and i'm out